Back to John Bachman now. Ontario Premier Doug Ford has now declared a state of emergency as the Freedom Convoy continues to disrupt traffic and prevent transport of goods across the Canadian border. Ford made the announcement earlier today and also says fines for noncompliance will be served also with a maximum penalty of $100,000 and up to a year in jail. Members are calling on House Democrats to hold a hearing on what they say was GoFundMe's selective discrimination and, of course, cancelling the Freedom Convoy campaign by those Canadian truckers. In a letter, they wrote that GoFundMe also attempted to defraud hardworking taxpayers of millions of dollars in donations received in support of an organization they said was promoting individual freedom. Joining us to discuss all the details is Vice President of Heritage Action, uh, Garrett Best, joining us today. Garrett, it's great to have you with us. Well, thanks for having me on. All right, GOP members Steve Scalise and James Comer, James Comer, who is live with us um, here on the show today, all requesting that hearing to examine yet another incident of big tech trying to silence just certain viewpoints in possibly unlawful ways. Tell us where you think this will go. Yeah, it's a great question and, and why um, conservatives need to uh, stop thinking small about big tech in the sense of usually we hear conservatives talking about the big four, the big five, and those are Facebook, Apple, Amazon, et cetera. But in reality, there's lots of tech companies such as the story that you're talking about now, GoFundMe, um, recently uh, having this issue with the Canadian truckers. Um, this is a pervasive uh, mindset across big tech. Um, that is that is not just confined to the to the big four or big five companies, um, and corporations simply do not have a right to extinguish uh, our basic freedoms and rights that that um, that we are promised in this society. And and um, I applaud the the House Republicans who are working on this issue, uh, this particular one on GoFundMe, but more broadly to take on big tech. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is also investigating the GoFundMe, and his probe will determine whether the company is violating his own state's Deceptive Trade Practices Act. Uh, I think, you know, a lot of people would agree that Washington isn't really likely to take a lot of action here, but can states do something to push back against, uh, against big tech? Can states do something legally to force GoFundMe to change their policies? Yeah, that's a great question, and this is sort of a new frontier in, in policy at the state level, and that is how can how can state AGs, for example, but even also state legislators, how can they uh, enact certain laws and, and use certain levers of power uh, to protect the citizens within their state? Uh, you, you referenced the Texas AG's work. Uh, there's also been work done in other states, uh, such as in Iowa, where um, various tax credits and, and, and various other uh, land abatements and those kinds of things that the state legislature has taken a look at and said, you know, if you're a tech company and you're going to infringe on, on the basic rights of our citizens, uh, then we're, we're going to take a hard look at the policies that you're benefiting from in our states. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I, I suspect that we will see uh, various states take uh, various approaches across this and and uh, and they should. Uh, they should look at every lever of power. There's going to be different levers of power in different states. Mm -hmm. Uh, that elected officials can use. And also, Garrett, it's so much about we the people, right? And a lot of people don't know what their rights are. And it starts with really getting the information to the public. The Heritage Foundation really has recently laid out a roadmap which can hold big tech accountable, stop the threat to the companies that pose these threats really to Americans everywhere as they try to silence free speech. Um, what's your advice to folks out there? And they can take a, some insight from this new report. Well, first off, go to heritage.org. It's it's on the front page there, and you can read the report. Uh, the online it says it takes you about an hour. It's really only about a 35, 40 minute read, but it's oh, there you go. it's uh, it's it's a it's a good exhaustive uh, set of recommendations for how Americans can go about it. At the heart of what the big tech companies really care about is their bottom line, and so there's some recommendations in there that that take a look at their algorithms, uh, making sure that. Americans realize how uh, their data is being used, but also how the algorithms are being tweaked consistently uh, to to basically perfect addictive uh, uh, traits of these of these algorithms. Um, in some cases, um, they they employ lots of even child psychologists to to ensure 
that the algorithms addict uh, children as, as, as young as possible, wow. um, hook them for life. It, it's, mm. it's really an insidious mm. uh, practice. And so Americans need transparency uh, to see that. But then also uh, Americans need to realize that, yes, you're getting free services, quote unquote, from a lot of these tech companies. Uh, but those free services are, are in, in essence, being paid for by you giving up all your data. And so um, I That's think right. Americans sort of understand that on its, on its face. But when they realize just how much value they're handing over to these companies, um, and, and and that's part of the recommendations too as well. And so we we've got to we've got to get at the algorithms, and we've got to get at the um, the ad uh, sort of buy sell uh, portions of these of these uh, platforms. Hmm. Garrett Bess, really great information. We're so glad you could join us today, and people should check that out, especially when it comes to their kids who are doing a lot of stuff online. Thanks, Garrett. Yeah, thanks so much.